hi everyone welcome back in another video so in this video i thought to share with you something that i newly built in my bull stack uh, platform so if you don't know this is uh, a platform that i recently built to provide ui components or pre-made ready to use uh, ui components in your project and uh, i'm using chat cn to be able to build this these components so and uh, the thing that I want to share with you is this little nav bar. So the nav bar that I want to uh, actually talk about in this video and how to use is this little nav bar that I'm using in my own uh, website. So also this is the landing page of this bullstack.div. So if you are new to my channel and you're not familiar with it because I've already created some videos about this. So this, as I said, is going to provide UI components free to use all you have to do go to the block section and here under each section you're having the components uh, uh, yes i don't have a lot of components uh, built yet but i'm on my way to actually build more components that's going to allow ye, allow me and you to build uh, projects a lot faster or to build uis a lot faster and also I'm providing a tool called Next.js Polarplate Generator that's going to help you to actually generate Polarplate uh, Next.js project uh, uh, so you can be able to skip uh, uh, installing ShadCN and the fonts and many other uh, basic stuff and just focus on building the projects that you want. So you can explore this by going through this stepper if when I use this tool. So now we're going to focus on this uh, nav bar. So if we go to the block section here and here into the nav bar uh, blocks, so we're having right now at this moment two nav bars. So this is the old one and this is the new one that I currently use in, in my uh, own website. And uh, also uh, one thing that I want to share with you, as you can see here, it is totally responsive. And also we're having this new button that I added to be able to access to the menu in the mobile screen. So this is the nav bar that I want to share with you. And uh, if we go to the code section, so uh, as you can see, this is the whole code. And also um, uh, actually uh, add in, in the comment section, uh, examples uh, how to use uh, this component. And this component uh, uses some of the libraries and this is why I talked about this because it's going to have all the libraries necessary to be able to use without any problems all the components that I'm providing in here. So as you can see it's a pretty long code and what I want to share with you in this video how to be able to use this uh, component because it is providing some prompts just to uh, copy and paste this components in your project and you are uh, ready to go and that's going to save you a huge amount of time to focus on more uh, fundament fundamental features into uh, your project. So as you can see I'm in VS Code so I already created a new Next.js project to show you how to be able to use this reusable uh, navbar. So first thing first go to the uh, navbars uh, page section. So uh, right now I'm having just two navbars. As I showed you click on the copy code and go back to your actual project. So the first thing that I'm going to do I'm going to create a new folder so i'm going to call it component and inside of it i'm going to create a new file and i'm going to call it navbar.tsx like this and i'm going to paste the code so as you can see we don't have any errors so everything is working well and also as you can see at the top i provided some examples on how to be able to use this actual component and uh, what are the features and the options that uh, this component provides. So after we actually added our component into our project, so what we're going to do here, we are going to actually uh, call the component like this. So right now I'm not going to provide any prompt 
and uh, I'm going to run the project by typing npm run div. So let's go back to our VS code and I'm going to open up a new tab with the localhost 3000. So we should see our navbar after the project is compiled into our uh, into the main page. So as you can see right off the bat we're having this awesome navbar. So we're having like by default uh, because we're going to use an array to be able to actually uh, render our uh, menu by using the uh, navigation menu component from ShadCN. So you have all of this right off the bat. So just to show you like when we scroll, so let me add some uh, height just to be able to scroll uh, the page. I'm going to save the file, go back to the project or to, to the browser. So as you can see, as I'm scrolling, we're going to have this uh, this uh, shadow and also the actual nav bar is, uh, is uh, sticky at the top uh, of the browser. So the first prompt that I'm going to show you, so talking about uh, stickiness of the nav bar, so the first prompt is, uh, is sticky. So you can be able to make it sticky or not just by using this prompt and I'm going to uh, make it false. Because if we go to the navbar prompt or the uh, prompts of the component, so if you go to the interface here, so this is the main interface or structure of the prompts of our component. So we're having a sticky and by default, uh, so because this is uh, optional and uh, if it is optional, we need to actually assign a default value. So if you go to the component here and uh, so uh, here, when when we are destructuring our our uh, object navbar uh, to prompts, so as you can see, if it is undefined, so it's going to be true uh, by default. So, if I go back to the project or to the to the page, uh, sorry. So as you can see, right now it is not sticky. So all you have to do just actually use one prompt, and you are uh, ready to go. So the next prompt that I want to talk about, if we go back to the component, so we're having the uh, an object called uh, the domain. So the domain has the name and the logo. So uh, you can actually change the uh, name of uh, the uh, website and the navbar. So this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to actually use the domain, domain object. And here I need to provide the uh, logo or the name first. So I'm going to just type name and so I'm going to type in uh, test.com and I'm going to save uh, the file. Let's go back to our project or to our uh, browser, sorry. And as you can see, we're having our new name of the website and the nav bar. So also we can be able to change this uh, icon. So uh, one thing that I uh, that I added. So instead of uh, assigning the icon as uh, an icon type from uh, React icons or Lucid icon. So what I did in the actual uh, type of the logo, it is a React node. So the reason why I did so. Uh, just to give the uh, ability to the developer to actually create a component and inside of it you can do some customization so you can have uh, a customized icon. So the same thing that I did for my website here. So I created an external component that has an icon inside a div and it has all the uh, styling to be able to have this actual icon. So this is why I made the logo as a React node. So just to show you, and uh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to add the logo prompt. And uh, here, since as I said, it accepts a React node, so I can add a div like this. And also I can add an icon. So um, let's add a random icon like this. And inside this div, I'm going to add some stylings. So uh, 
let's uh, do this flex size 4 or 8 and uh, the background primary and the uh, justify center and item center to be able to actually center the icon inside this div so let's go back to the uh, uh, to our to our browser so as you can see we're having our new icon so I can add uh, the size so let me uh, do this so as you can see we're having our icon so it doesn't matter uh, the the stylings so the only thing that I'm showing you is how this nav bar is uh, useful and how time that you are going to be saving by just using this actual uh, component so this is for the uh, the main uh, object or the the main prop of the actual component and now I'm going to show you another uh, useful prompt that's going to allow us to actually uh, customize uh, the buttons or even hide these two buttons if you don't want to show them uh, into your nav bar. So let's go back to the VS Code and uh, let's go back uh, to our nav bar that JSX. So as you can see, we're having this Authlinks object that has three elements, the visible, uh, which is a boolean and the login which has this structure so it has the text and the on click event listener and the same for the register element so once we uh, knew uh, what is uh, the structure of this prompt then we can uh, we can easily use this prompt so uh, let me add the auth uh, sorry so let me add the auth links and here, let's say that I want to actually hide this, uh, these buttons. So as you can see, all of these buttons are gone. And uh, let's say uh, I want to change the uh, login uh, text or the button of the login text. So I'm going to actually <clears throat> type in sign in. And here, as you can see, right at the bat, we're having our new text here. And also the same thing uh, in here. So we can be able to actually change the register and add the text to it. And let's type in register. So as you can see, we're having our new, uh, <clears throat> our new button uh, of a new text of the register uh, button and another component that I want to or another prompt that I want to sh show you is this left add-on so let this left add-on it's going to allow us to add stuff uh, right at the left of these buttons if we want to so uh, one of the things that I'm doing here I'm making the buttons invisible but I'm adding this light and dark mode so this is a component that is provided by shad cn and uh, this is what i did i used it and i signed it to the actual left add-ons so i'm gonna add this prompt and here since uh, the type of it is a react node i'm gonna actually use the mode toggle component and save the file let's go back to our nav bar as you can see this is our mode toggle we can be able to change the dark mode and you can add whatever component or you can even add another button in here so uh, that's why i thought about it and i added this left add-on uh, prompt uh, right at the left of these uh, two buttons and the last prop of our component is the navigation menu so if we go back to the navbar.jsx so uh, let's see the interface and uh, here we're having the navigation menu uh, property which has the type of menu items so the menu items it is structured this way the title the url and the sub menu uh, property and the sub menu property has this structure so just uh, to actually uh, explain to you this uh, very clearly just to see how this 
actual area is organized so as you can see this is the whole overall structure so we're having an area and inside each area we're having an object so these are the properties and in each object we're having the sub menu uh, property which is an area that has the this st structure so instead of using the default uh, the default area from the component you can actually add your own area as long as you are following the same structure and this is what i'm going to do so i already generated by using ai an area so i'm gonna type in my uh, main, my my menu like this and it's going to be of type menu item so this is going to be exported from the component so one thing that I didn't mention, this whole project is for people who are uh, a bit advanced into the uh, field of web, web development, no TypeScript, no React. So for beginners, I don't recommend that people actually, uh, so if you want to learn from this, so that's fine. But uh, actually, uh, it might be a little bit uh, overwhelming for some people. Uh, just getting into this so when you can use AI to actually get some uh, explanations on how each component works so here I'm gonna copy the array so the only thing that I need to add here is I need to add so um, let me so let me put this outside I don't know why this uh, code is making this error so I'm going to actually uh, import the icon and the newspaper icon from uh, Lucid icon or Lucid React. And uh, here, so it is throwing an error. So, uh, so it's not a big deal because the only thing that I need to do is I need to actually use this uh, this area so to be able to use this area we are going to actually use uh, the uh, prompt which is the navigation menu and I'm gonna assign it to my menu so let's save the file so let's go back to the project and as you can see we're having our menu right off the bat and it is pointing towards the link that we added in the property of our area so discover it is point pointing to this route so the same thing that uh, we did in here and let's say that if we actually get rid from the sub menu and uh, save the file so let's go back to the browser so as you can see it is a simple link so the actual uh, component it's going to calculate this of program this to actually use a simple link or a navigation menu component from chassis independent on the sub menu area if it is empty or if it is not used uh, uh, in the structure of the area so here you have it so this is the component so as you can see it is very easy to use uh, just copy and paste use the prompts and you are ready to go so it's going to save you a lot of time and focusing on other uh, major and important stuff into your uh, project.